Happy Tuesday, everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. We are continuing on The Bride of Frankenstein's Bouquet. Uh, this is the embroidery of the month for October. I'm actually stitching it on white with the same, with the same colors. So we can kind of see when we're done uh, what they what the same colors look like on a light color and a dark color fabric. I'm excited to see how it turns out. So thanks for joining me here. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, so again, we are working on this bride of Frankenstein's bouquet. Uh, we did uh, some chain stitch last night and I'm hoping that we can actually finish the chain stitches tonight. That would be kind of awesome if we finish those. Those are all the roses. And I have a new technique that I want to show on how you can do the loop method uh, with two strands of embroidery floss when you start your floss. So we'll work on that today as well. So thanks for coming in guys. All right, hello, hello everyone. So here we are. This is, uh, we, we got um, yeah, maybe one and a couple halves of some roses done last night. Uh, I got the PDF up on my iPad here so I can look at the, um, what stitches to use and what colors to use where. So I'll keep that up. And uh, here is the finished black version. Uh, I love how these neutrals are looking. I think it's kind of getting a little color corrected <laughs> uh, in the camera, but it is, uh, you can tell the different colors and it's, it's pretty. We got like a light gray, a dark gray, some white for the um, spider webs there. And then this is like a pretty tan, the bow, but it actually comes off as kind of pink when it's next to these other colors. And I'm hoping we get that same effect with this, uh, with the the white piece as well. All right, you guys, so let's get a little bit closer again. Zoop. All right, so uh, I wanna try a different technique for starting the thread tonight. I know we just talked about that a little bit. It is the loop method. Um, but I have some thread left over yet. So I think first we'll work our way through well, I don't know. Let's let's get a whole new piece of thread, and I will show you how to do that loop method right now. How about that? All right. So hold on a sec, you guys. Ooh. Okay. So hopefully we're still okay. It looks like YouTube might be getting a little funny here, uh, but hopefully we stick stick okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to get a little bit longer piece this time because I'm actually going to end up doubling up uh, one strand. So you know how I usually have about 24 inches or so? I'm going to get double that. So I'm just kind of splitting it right like so. How about, how about like that? So let's just snip. This is actually way more thread than I'll need to finish this, but I want to show you this loop method, which I think is going to be great uh, for the two strands. Because we're stitching with this, this with, with two strands, and normally I use three strands, but I wanted this piece a little bit more delicate, so we're doing two strands. And there's more opportunities with two strands uh, because it's an equal number of threads. Uh, for one, we can do this loop method. So I'm just gonna pull one strand of thread out here. So just one this time. All the way to the end there. That was a long pull. I usually, like I said, don't use this much thread all at once. Uh, you could, I used to when I was younger, use a whole lot of thread, but then you're pulling and pulling and pulling for a long time. I think it's easier just to start, start over or yeah, start a new piece. So I am bringing both ends together. So uh, we will have our two ends and then uh, there'll be a loop on the other side, right? So it's just, it's just the fold, right? Uh, nothing special there. So I'm gonna thread this side and remember, we have this, this loop on this side. So how we're going to start this 
I'm gonna start a whole new area just so you can see. I'm gonna start, I think I'll start here and I'll go around the outside. So I am going to just start my stitch and I'm gonna go back down because uh, with the chain stitch I'm going back in the same stitch but before you know typically I would come back up right away but before I do that I am actually going to pull this a little bit further so I'm on the back now and I'm going to loop um, oh this might not work very well for a uh, chain stitch because we're coming up in the same hole so I'm gonna do I'm gonna add to this a little bit I'm gonna go around that loop one more time just to kind of lock it in place. We'll use this on the um, on the split stitch and the stem stitch. I think it'll work a little bit better for that. But then I'm going to come back up and then finish my stitch. But it should kind of lock that loop in place. There we go. So we are <laughs> basically locked in place with that loop. Uh, I'm going to do this again uh, when it comes to, oh, you know what? My loop is up here now. All right, you guys, we're going to do this a little differently because this, it's not working well with the, the, um, the chain stitch because you come up in the same hole. So let's try that again. I'm going to actually do that with a different stitch because it's going to show a little bit better. So let's start that fresh, you guys. I'm going to just switch colors quickly. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that type of start with a chain stitch, but let's do, let's do one of these stems. So I'm going to grab the stem color quick, and we'll try this again. I'm going to get a new... Oh, it works. Okay, Christy's saying it works good at with a reverse chain stitch. So we could try that, but I'm going to do it quickly with just a just a stem stitch. Yeah, cuz the, the idea is you can't go in the same hole again cuz then the loop won't catch. All right, let's try that again. Oops, bring both of them up here. little change in plan. All right, so there I have my thread again. I have um, my two strands threaded and my little uh, little loop on the other end, like so. All right, so I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna do a, a, um, stem stitch down down to here. So I'm going to go my stitch away. For a stem stitch I have this loop down here and now before I bring it up hold on keep my finger in there now I'm going to loop in that loop and I'm going to come back up. So I'm holding the thread down here, but here's that loop. If we look from the back, as I pull through and I keep pulling, then that loop is going to tighten. So there we go. I got a little loop on the back. I don't have any strings to weave in or anything. Uh, I'm good to go with that loop on the back. And I have my, my first stitch here. So that's all there is to the loop method. So you can kind of see why it wasn't going to work when I went in the same hole, like with the chain stitch. But this is an excellent way to start and, and clearly works great when you have two strands. Wouldn't work quite as well with three strands. But let's just peek at the back again. It is just part of it right there. Super duper duper easy. Um, okay, so I'm going to continue with this stem stitch. So a stem stitch works fabulously using the sewing method. 
And the sewing method, again, is where you go in and out with one motion. So I'm going to hold my thread in a downward position, and then I'm going to go like a stitch. So we came out here, and I'm going to go a little bit further, and then I'm going to come up in the same motion where that first stitch was, and I still have my thread looped underneath, and now I'm going to pull it all the way through and the loop is going to stay kind of in an underneath position here. So then I'm going to pull this back down and we're going to do it again. So in and out, we're kind of ending up right in the middle. And then when I pull through, my thread is kind of stopped by that coming up in the middle there. And it makes it just a really pretty stitch. So you can do it using the stabbing method, but it took me years to realize that the sewing method made this stitch easy and the stabbing method made it difficult. So I'll kind of show you why. So the stabbing method is if I go down and up. But when I was learning, I would go down and I'd pull this straight and then I'd have to get up in here and try not to stab that place that I just was. I'd have to move my stitches out of the way to see it. And it was just so difficult. And I realized that it's because I pulled the thread tight. Um, and if I go down and then come up before I pull it too tight, then it's basically similar to the sewing method where you just go in and out at once. But you got to go... Uh, you got to go down and up before you pull it. Otherwise, it's going to be really difficult. And I think I'll just go back in the same spot there. I think we might be able to go, I might have enough thread to come back up the other side. So let's, let's give that a try. Uh, yes, uh, Gretchen, the stems are the thunder color. So the only thing that's the light gray, and this is all, it's all labeled on the, on the uh, diagram as well. Like what color goes where. So here, I'm going to do the stabbing method again. I'm going to go down and then up in the center, but I got to make sure all this is out of the way underneath it there. Sewing method is, is easier. So you might need a little looser fabric in your, hoop, in your hoop if you're doing the sewing method. You can see I'm kind of bubbly again here. Um, I will... I will tighten that back up when I'm done here. I'm going to try that loop method with the reverse chain stitch because I would love to use that loop method again. Let me use the stabbing method a little bit. I'm in an awkward position for this stitch. So I think the stabbing method is the way I'm going to finish it up here. Had enough thread though. That's always nice. You know, I didn't do the little, um, the little thorns yet. I'll have to go back and do those with a new piece of thread, but that's okay. Cause this whole rose, oh, I know this rose up here is, is the light gray color, but this, the leaf over here is dark gray. So I'll have to do this and kind of weave back in and do all the rest. But I wanted to stick with the stem stitch and all those are a different, different stitch. All right, I think we'll, we'll do that half stitch at the end here too. Just to make it extra thick on the top. Okay, there we go. That is our pretty stem stitch. Uh, it's a little hard to tell. I think it'll be, uh, uh, once we get that stabilizer off, the stick and stitch, we'll be able to see it a little bit. But I'll show you on the black, because it is really, really pretty, this stem stitch. I'm, I've grown to love it. Like I said, this stitch baffled me for ages until I realized that the sewing method, where you go in and out in the same motion, that is key uh, to the stem stitch. And after that, I'm like, oh... Well, this is a fun stitch. I wish I knew that a long time ago. Uh, so I, I'm, I have like this little fear in the back of my head about it still. And uh, it doesn't need to be there anymore, but it still 
a little triggers a little uh, when I start it, but I I love it and I want to explore it a little bit more. Some of them got a little bit loopy there. Let's just try and pull on them, see if we can even out our stitches a little bit. There we go. That's looking awfully pretty. So here it is on the finished, the finished black one. You can see all the little stitches. They're like tiny little diagonals all together. I think it's just such a pretty stitch and we're using it with the stems. So it's well named this, this time. <laughs> Uh, the, are the, Gretchen's asking, are the leaf's stem, the leaf's stem or, or split stitch or chain stitch? Uh, I'm doing the leaves a, a split stitch. So we'll go over that, uh, as well. Maybe we'll just continue with that. Should we just, I know we were going to do all the rest of this gray, but now, now I've kind of moved on to this dark gray. Eh, let's, let's go back to our, let's go back to our chain stitch for a little bit. Or maybe let's do the one last stitch. I keep changing it up here, but let's do the one last stitch that we, we haven't done yet. So uh, then you'll have all three stitches. There's three different stitches that I use in this one. Uh, the chain stitch, the stem stitch, and then the split stitch. That'll be the last one here. So I'm just going to grab one more thread. I'm using the that dark gray which is the thunder color in uh, the penguin and fish floss. So let's start this again uh, with that loop method. So I'm, because I have these long pieces. So I'm bringing the two ends together and I have that loop on the other side. Basically the fold on the other side. But dang, that loop method, that's pretty dang slick. Oh, Kathy says the loop method is brand new to me. Kind of blows my mind. Yeah, and it, you know, I'm not used to using it, clearly, because <laughs> I messed up on that first one. Um, because I typically use three strands of floss, and that's just because I like the thickness that three strands gets versus, versus two. But two is a very common number of strands, and I suspect because of tricks like this, for sure. All right, I'm going to do the split stitch... Uh, around this little leaf up here. So let's start with that loop method again. Just holding it in a comfortable position, which for me right now is upside down. Okay, so for the split stitch, uh, we are just making making a normal size stitch, like a eh, little bit more than an eighth inch or so. That's how we're gonna start. You could do smaller. Uh, you could do like a sixteenth of an inch. All right, so I'm going back down here, but remember, I am going to catch this loop. So let's just let's just pull it all the way tight here. There we go. Uh, so my loop's back there. So that's a loop method. Done with that. Um, now let's let's finish the split stitch. So let's get real close here. Here is that stitch I just made. We are actually going to come from the back right through the two. To the two threads. So there's two threads here because we're using two or two um, threads from this skein. So I'm going to come almost maybe yeah, you can kind of come in the middle or a little bit closer to uh, where your next stitch is going to be. But you can see I've pierced through both of those, both, both of those threads. So I'm coming right through the middle. I'm splitting it. So I'm splitting the, th the floss in half and uh, that's all there is to it. <laughs> so uh, so I'm, you can see I'm kind of coming up in the middle. It's almost like I made a mistake doing a stem stitch because I stabbed it in the middle instead of like coming up on one side of it. Um, so all of these are very related. Um, this is actually going to look like a chain stitch when we're done, but a really skinny one. So let's, let's make another stitch. All right, I'm going to pull all the way tight and then I'm going to come up a little behind again and stabbing through those two threads again. And it works great because we're using just two strands of floss. Obviously with three strands, it's a little difficult because you got to decide, oh, do I put two strands on one side and one on the other? 
uh, but with two strands, it goes right in there. And I like, I like this stitch because it makes kind of an organic, solid line. So you guys, I know I, I totally like backstitch and I use it a lot for my main outline. But if you want something to look a little less beady, um, you know, like where you can see each little stitch in a row, like a string of pearls or something, which I think is what the backstitch is like, you could do this stem stitch instead and it'll look more like a solid, a solid line that just is the shape of, of your piece. If you look really closely, it almost looks like a, a chain stitch. And I can show you that on, on um, the black one. I think you can see a little bit better. So here we're comparing these. So this is a stem stitch right there. You're coming up, stabbing through, up through the, the middle of it, but it almost looks like a chain stitch, but just like with one strand on either side of the chain, whereas this one has two. Um, so it, it, they're kind of like a little, they're like cousins here a little bit, uh, which I think makes it look nice together on, on the piece. It's like, a, you know, the thick chain and the, the skinny chain almost. But yeah, I think it's gonna look really pretty on, on here. All right, so um, I'm gonna actually do, since we're at a corner here, I'm gonna do a almost like a back stitch just to get the stitch started again. Because if I start, if I do a forward stitch, I'd have to come up through that same hole and um, the stitch would come out. So splitting right in the middle of those. And even on this curve, I kind of got to get in the back in the middle of there, force, force that stitch to be over here. But yeah, so you can come up right in the center of your stitch. I kind of err on the side of being a little closer to the forward most part of the stitch. This is looking awfully pretty though. It's so, it is just like this delicate, solid little line. I do like it. So the, I don't use this stitch very often either. And you know what? I think it's just because I like the back stitch. I like that kind of beady look of the back stitch. But this, this just design, I thought, just called for a little bit more organic look, less beady. And I thought it'd be fun to try, try something new. So there we go. So here you can kind of tell all the stitches, it just kind of blends together into one solid line almost. I mean, if you look real close, they almost look like chain stitches. But from far away, it is like one beady or like one um, solid line. It doesn't have those little beads. Uh, like a back stitch would. So I like it. I think it's fun. All right, I'm gonna actually shimmy through the back of these stitches and I'm gonna try and get these thorns. Um, oh, I have another, I have another guy here too. So if I don't, if I don't get all of them, I still have, um, I have to go up this way and get this leaf yet too. So I'm gonna run out of thread before that. So I'll uh, travel down the row here a little bit. Instead of making a big jump, to where I need to go. I'm just going to weave in the backs of these stitches. There we go, about to here. And uh, I'm going to get this thorn with a couple split stitches. Let's stab that stitch. Cute. Yeah, and that's it, you guys. Those are the three stitches that I'm using in this piece. We got that chain stitch, the uh, stem stitch, and the split stitch. All right, I think we can get, I can travel down and maybe get this thorn yet. I might actually be able to do some of these stitches, really. I, yeah, I might have enough thread. That'd be pretty awesome. Oh, I still have that leaf though. I keep, this leaf is all, um, 
this gray and stem stitch or uh, uh, split stitch as well. So I, I still will need another piece of thread. Won't get that all done. So if you wanted this um, less Halloween-y, <laughs> you could probably stitch this without the thorns too. I thought the the thorns and uh, made it a little a little more ominous. This this uh, these uh, this bouquet. So you could skip out on. I mean, you could skip out on the spider and skip out on the thorns if you wanted a little more normal looking bouquet so again I keep I keep turning so it's the easiest for me to hold the piece plus uh, feel the stitches in the back if I had this in a, a like a an embroidery frame that is stationary that's just like clamped here uh, then my this hand would be free. I wouldn't be holding this, so I could could feel the back and and work from the front, uh, at the same time. So the back is really doing a lot of work. It, it's feeling the the stitches as they come through, feeling the needle as it comes through. Um, you'll be able to feel if there's a knot. Um, so it's nice to have the your left hand or your non-dominant hand back there doing some work. All right, and let's see if we can crawl up here with some stem stitches. Although, is that a good idea? I'm not sure. I don't really have that much thread left. I might have just enough. Stem stitches do use up a lot of thread. Um, but they go pretty quickly. I think we did it. Let's go right there. I think I'll still add that little half stitch at the end so that um, the stitch ends up being the same thickness. Oh, I shouldn't have pulled it through all the way. So now I got to jigger it out of the way a little bit. All right, there we go. Now I can weave it in, but that we got a lot more of that dark gray in that than I thought we were going to, so I'm, I'm happy about that. Let's weave in those ends. Yeah, that loop method is pretty dang slick. I'm gonna use that way more often when I'm just using um, the two strands. So in theory, you could do that with four strands, any, any even number of strands. That would almost be a reason to stick to the two strands, right? But then it's a, the stitches are a little thinner, a little more dainty, and I don't want that all the time. All right, coming along here. So I think, why don't we go back to this chain stitch here? Got kind of like a weird piece of thread here, okay. This, this guy's done. Let's try doing that uh, loop method with the reverse chain stitch. Oh yeah, Gretchen, that might be, um, if you have another needle, see how that one, see how that one does. Oh, Rebecca says she likes using the Q-snap. So I do actually have some of those. That would be fun to try with an embroidery sometime. Lisa, I'm not, and I'm not sure why. Let's get it out. So we have, I, this is not something I've done, but um, done often, but with the last embroidery, I used it almost every single time. So I'm kind of getting used to it with embroidery thread, but this is uh, some thread gloss. This one's by uh, Wisecraft Handmade. So it's it's like wisecrafthandmade.com, if you guys can see that. Uh, she has this thread gloss and it smells amazing. But uh, I can 
run the thread through here. Oh, I should have maybe done it after I have it on the needle, but I suppose it doesn't matter. So you can kind of see that it's a little twisty and stuff. This should get, well, get rid of it to some extent. And it's just adding basically a coat of wax to this. Oh my God, it smells so good. I forgot how good it smells. Uh, but it's going to make it a little uh, sturdier, a little less fluffy as I stitch. And um, that can sometimes help reduce knots happening. And uh, I mean, I'm using it because it smells amazing. This one smells like Christmas. I think of Christmas every time I use this uh, rainfall one. All right, so we're going to do that loop method again, and I'm going to try it with the reverse chain stitch. So the reverse chain stitch is where I make that tiny little anchor stitch to start out. So let's do that. Okay, so now in theory I'd catch this loop. Oh gosh, let's... I'm gonna put my finger in here so I can pull it like almost all the way to the end of the loop without it coming through. All right, now let's grab that loop. I'm actually gonna pull it a little bit more and now I'm gonna pull from the front. Although I need this to stay, stay a loop for a little while longer too. All right, let's make that first stitch. Pull this loop tight. All right, I think both loops are looking great. Tighten it up and finish our stitch. And there we go. That is our first stitch, our first reverse chain stitch and loop method. It's holding it together right there. You can see real close. We got an itty bitty bitty loop holding it there, kind of crazy. That is really amazing. No threads, no nothing hanging about. Uh, it's a little bit magic. All right, let's do that reverse chain stitch for the rest of this. So reverse chain stitch, you can do that start, but forward chain stitch, not so much. <laughs> Where you go in the same hole, you can't, you can't, um, can't make a loop there. Well, I kind of like this reverse chain stitch better anyway. Oh, did we? So Kathy, Kathy said, speaking of Christmas, did you get snow last night? We got a teeny bit of snow last night, but we got about six and a half inches while we were at the warehouse today. <laughs> so yes, we got a massive amount of snow. Uh, it was slow driving on the way back for sure. Uh, but it started around uh, ugh, maybe 10.30 and it just never stopped, basically. <laughs> I think our warning is supposed to go till 10 p.m. tonight. But it is fat, wet snow. It is so hefty and big. I did take a picture for you guys, so I'll post it in the Facebook group when we're done here. Uh, or on the Facebook page, one or the other. And, uh, and show you. But, ugh, we had to wipe, like, at least... At least, and I'm so not even exaggerating, six inches off the top of the car uh, before we left. Oh, God. And the radio on the way home, it said that it was the most, in the Twin Cities area, it was the most earliest snowfall um, in recorded recorded um, weather for, for the Twin Cities. So the biggest amount of snow, the earliest. <laughs> Uh, but dang, <laughs> it was so much. Yes, it is. Oh, Noeline's saying, wow, it's early. Yep. Uh, like I said, it's the earliest, biggest total amount, um, snow. And speaking of knots, there we go. Sheesh, I'm winding it up on itself here. It was hefty. And I told John, uh, I told him when I, when I left, just so he'd, he'd know. And I got home and the whole, the whole driveway was shoveled. So I could turn right in there without 
I don't know, getting stuck on the road, I suppose. The roads aren't all, um, aren't all plowed yet. And it just came down. Like, it's just coming down. Like, in a couple hours, there was six inches. Oh, thanks, Valeria! Yay! I appreciate that a ton. You're sweet. Oh, yes, and Paula asks, are the leaves still on the trees? They sure are! We have, an, an uh, like, a young oak tree... Uh, it's like the street tree, but it's on our, on our side. It is, it is, uh, full of beautiful, like, red leaves right now. But now there's, like, heavy, heavy snow on that. I bet you we have a lot of, um, snow situations, or, like, tree situations tomorrow. Because this oak tree, its branches are, like, being pulled to the ground. Because there is so much weight uh, in that snow because it's so wet and so much and then it's holding all those leaves those giant leaves are holding it all up too so I'm a little nervous for I mean I'm sure it'll be fine but they're almost to the ground some of these branches pretty crazy oh yeah luckily we did finish the grading um, of our house last weekend <laughs> Poor John went out in, like, the 32-degree weather to finish that up. Uh, thank goodness. So the grading is where you have that, where you make kind of a slope coming from your house with, like, you pound down a, a bunch of dirt, and we put rock on, on top of it, and then we planted our plants back in there again. But then any water or, like, melting snow will, um, in theory, run away from the house and instead of going this way into the basement. So we're hoping that that will be helpful. <laughs> so one one big yard thing done just in time. Oh, Paul said it was 75 in Virginia. Oh, that's the most perfect temperature. <laughs> Valeria says, I hate snow. Um... It is, it is, uh, it is beautiful from the inside. That's what we kept saying, uh, at the office today. Me and Jenna and I were at the office, uh, so you can see us, when I post the picture later, you can see us, um, shoveling out our vehicles. Uh, but we were mentioning that all day, like, oh, it's, it's pretty. <laughs> it's pretty, at least, but, I. First snowfall, first big snowfall. That's that's like a true changing of the seasons. But I was I was pretty impressed with people's driving because typically the first day or first like week so week or so of new snow, people are still not acclimated to um, winter driving. And it, you know, everyone in Minnesota can do their win winter driving pretty dang good, but. Uh, there's always like a week or at least a couple of days where it's like people are still going a bajillion miles an hour and short braking and uh, um, all of that and it's it's annoying and it's dangerous and uh, no one was doing that today. Everyone was uh, driving awesome. I was surprised actually. So it was actually an easy drive home considering it was pretty slippery in some spots or potential for slipperiness. Oh, Paula says, yes, lots of branches breaking from heavy wet snow on branches and leaves. Oh, I've experienced it before. Yeah, I'm a little nervous. I hope our tree outside is fine. But, it, like, our tree has, it's, it is hardly, like, hardly any leaves have fallen yet. Like, it's still in that changing color. It's kind of a late tree for, for um, the leaves falling. Like, our neighbor's tree, all the leaves are gone already. But this tree takes some time. Ugh, and it's just, like, hands outstretched like this, holding up snow. So it's it's so weighted down. Ugh, but it's beautiful. I think I did, actually took a picture of that, too. So I'll post, I'll post us shoveling out our car and uh, um, a picture of that tree. I'll uh, post a picture of that right when we're done here. Oh gosh, Gretchen says, which is why Southerners don't drive, we stay home. Ha, <laughs> yep. Um, I uh, was just talking, like, we, li we lived in California for a while, and I remember one day it got to be, 
like 40 degrees or whatever, right? And people were freaking out. They're like, oh my god, there was black ice and my door was frozen shut and uh, <laughs> it's so cold. Like, And I'm like, 40 degrees? People here wear shorts still at 40 degrees. But oh man, people did not know what to do with themselves, that's for sure. Oh, <laughs> and Colleen is now uh, confirming that. She says uh, in California, we get problem drivers when and if it rains. I believe it. Oh, I think, uh, Valerie, I think Rebecca's referring to your little bouncy, bouncy dude. I'm not sure that they can, uh, choose what little character comes up there. But yes, thanks for the super chat. I appreciate that a ton. Oh gosh, uh, Gretchen says 40 degrees may as well be 20 below here. So we actually talked about that today too. And I'm sure you guys are, This is, I go down this rant every single year at this time on here. Um, oh, you can choose it. Oh, that's cool, Valeria. Um, but we were just talking about, at least it's like 30 degrees out. Because that's like a warm snow. It's, it's not too bad to go out and, and brush your car off and and all that, uh, but when it gets cold, like, when it starts getting into negative degrees, that's, that's tough, like, uh, I was, we were talking about, like, how 20 degrees is not the same as zero degrees, and is not the same as negative 20 degrees, there are full-on different levels of cold, um, <laughs> between all of those, oh, I thought I got a little loop on the back here, mm, how far back is that? Eh, oh well. Can I have a little loop on here? Got caught. Maybe I can weave it in a little bit. Ooh, this is kind of a tight curve for... for um, chain stitches. It's not going to really look like a chain stitch. It's just going to look like a little center coil, which is, I suppose, how it should look. There we go. All right, reverse chain stitch for the win there. Looking cute. All right, let's see, let's weave that in. So here's that loop I didn't notice. Um, usually this is like what I hope that my left hand catches, like little things like that. I'm gonna try and um, when I weave in these stitches, I'm gonna try and grab this loop and like weave it in with me so it's not like sticking up there. And I think that's working, good. So I'm gonna lose my thread. So let's just try and tack that down a little bit as we go back this way too. All right. Let's see, let's get the rest of that. There, that worked. Oh, Lillian says, gosh, makes my bones ache. And that is the ex exact thing. That is the difference between <laughs> zero degrees and negative 20 is your bones feel like they are going to crack in half. That is unpleasant. <laughs> unpleasant. All right, let's keep going with these these chain stitches. We just have this guy. Oh, this him up here too. So we actually have quite a bit yet of the chain stitches so I don't think we'll get all that done but we got we got all these other stitches done today too so let's finish up him uh, then we got this guy here and um, this little rose bud is with the um, chain stitch as well so let's continue doing the reverse chain stitch because then I can use that loop method try and use up these big long strands here all right I'm gonna do I'm gonna use that thread conditioner again but let's use it Let's try it out after we 
are together here. Let's actually, let's thread, let's uh, run it through this tip here. So I've, I've already folded this in half, so we'll see what it looks, what it feels like folded in half. So I, I suspect it's going to hold my threads together a little bit better. Yeah, so we've kind of almost waxed our threads together, so these two strands are going to hold together really nice as we stitch. Ooh, smells good. Oh my god, I just hope it kind of, it's still relatively warm. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, 30 degrees isn't really warm, but 30 degrees is still in the melt zone. So I'm hoping that this snow, even though it's so much, I'm hoping it doesn't stick around for all that long. Hmm, how should we do this? I might start from the center here. I'm just, mapping this out is a little odd. Like, I could come up here. I like from the center because it's going to be easier to start that chain stitch. Although, if I start here, eh. I think we'll start here and then jump over to here and then go this way. And I think doing a reverse stitch. I'll end up in a position to cover up this stitch and then we can weave back and down here. Okay, that's my plan. Um, I'm not sure I'll have enough thread for all that, but we're gonna try. So I'm gonna do the reverse stitch. So let's get this almost to the end, but not quite. Do our tiny, tiny anchor stitch. Maybe I'll pull it almost all the way through again. There we go. Let's grab that loop. All right, so I'm now in that loop. I think I'm gonna have to pull. It's a little awkward with having to do two of these tiny little stitches, but there we go. I kind of have that that loop held down there. That's just so neat. All right, let's start our first stitch. Get our needle in the anchor stitch. Pull that tight. All right, we are good. We'll finish up that stitch and let's see what this looks like. Loop there, loop here. It's all good. I'm going to try and tighten this a little bit. There we are. All right, we're started. It's just that starting that chain stitch, reverse chain stitch that's a little awkward. Oh, <laughs> Jenna says that I've lived in West Texas for 45 years, but still has her Dr. Zhivago uh, fur. <laughs> nice. Nice. I yeah, keep that in case the apocalypse happens down there. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Uh, Linda's saying the sat using a satin stitch for the body of the spider. I think that's what she's saying. Body of the spider would be would be scary. Yeah, we could do like a padded satin stitch or something. Ugh, yeah, that would be kind of scary. Fat spider over there. Yeah, I kind of like that idea. Maybe we will do satin stitch. A satin stitch will be like extra pretty with two strands as well, cause um. It'll be a little bit more silky, satiny looking. My mom likes that movie, the Dr. Zhivago. Yeah. It's been a while since I've seen that. That'd be one to watch again. 
That's a hefty one, though. That's one of those 70s movies that are like six hours long, isn't it? Uh... Ooh, metallic thread for the spider. That would be really fun, too. Well, that's interesting. So Sylvia says, I lived in Big Bend National Park uh, in Texas, and it got really, really hot and then also really cold. So I'm thinking... It that works a whole lot like how it works here in the in the winter or there's a, a similar effect so my guess is it gets pretty cold because the sun is gone and it's so clear that um there's no clouds to kind of hold in any of the heat which is oh perfect link smoothie for quilting for a quilting day that's for sure teresa uh but yeah, in winter, we have this weird effect, and thank God it's not this cold yet. Um, like, right now, if I went outside in the sun, uh, even with it, like, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, it would still, the sun would feel warm. <laughs> like, I could still probably feel a little bit, you know, being heated up by the sun. However, when it gets uh, colder, you know, closer to the zero degrees... Um, if the sun's coming out, you know it's going to be a blisteringly cold day. Um, it looks beautiful, and you're like, oh, yay, it's so sunny, isn't that nice? But then you have to think, oh, wait, it is going to be, like, 10 degrees colder. Uh, because the clouds, in when it gets cold here, is what holds in the heat. And the moment they go away, to reveal the sun, um, all that heat just floats away so not fun so we're not to the tricky sun yet that's that's the tricky sun where the sun out sun's out but that just means it's gonna be colder okay we got one more here There. See, I felt something with my hand there, and I did have a loop there that wasn't pulled all the way through. Okay, so I want to jump over here and work my way back this way. Am I even going to make it? Oh yeah, I got, I got some there. Hopefully just enough. I think I need to kind of make another little anchor stitch. Although I could. You know what? I don't have to make an anchor stitch, because watch this. I'm going to come up here. And I'm going to go around these loops that already exist. So I'm going to come up on the top ones, and we're going to come back down around there. And I can make my loop for this stitch that way. And it's actually kind of hidden underneath there yet. Ooh, that was good. Now I don't have to make a separate anchor stitch. We just anchored onto something that was already there. Ooh, that made my day. All right. Oh, man. I don't think I'm going to have enough to get all the way back there. That's going to be such a bummer. But, oh well. Just shifting hand positions to get better access with my left hand on the back again. Oh, Marianne, uh, where are you at? Did Marianne said that she got about six inches of snow today. That's how it was. That's how it was here, too. I got a little looped in here. I like the 
this reverse chain stitch. It's just relaxing. Oh, Forest Lake. Okay, so you're, you're, um, I'm in the, the Twin Cities area, Marianne. So, okay, so you got six inches. I heard in Lakeville, which is just south of here, they got eight and a half. <laughs> I think they had the most total, at least when I was um, on the way home. So that was around uh, around 5.30ish. Um, they were saying we already had about six and a half inches and Lakeville was pushing, pushing eight and a half at that point. Uh, oh my God. It's funny, John's aunt and uncle uh, live in that area, but they, I think, are just coming back from vacation. So they're going to come back from vacation with, like, a thousand inches of snow. All right, I really don't have a lot of thread left, but I really want to get up to this here. Ugh. It's like two more stitches. Let's see if I can do it. I want to connect up with that other one that I did a forward chain stitch. All right, so now I think I can just come up through that loop, loop around here, and then go back down through that same loop, and it'll look connected. Yay! Just enough floss. Perfect. Okay, great. So you can totally, you can't even, like, I can't even tell which part we ended on anymore. It's just blending right in. That's awesome. So, all right. Um, I'm going to weave in this end. Oh, and you know, you know what? It's about that time. So maybe we'll prep the next thread. I think I'll, um, let's see. I think I'll go from here to here. And then maybe I'm just going to leap over here. I don't like kind of jumping across things, but it's kind of a lighter color and yeah. I suppose it doesn't matter so much. So I might jump across there. All right, let's weave in this end. All right. And there we are, moving right along. So almost have all of these guys done. Just that guy, the little rosebud, and this guy over here. And then we're done with the gray. Um, that should easily get done tomorrow. I would love to, man, it would be awesome if we could finish all of the leaves and stems tomorrow too. That would be really, 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 really great. That's kind of a lot though. But that stem stitch does go pretty quickly. So we'll see. Let's see how fast we can do it tomorrow. We know all the stitches now. Um, so uh, let's just start, let's put it into gear now. So yeah, tomorrow we'll finish up the chain stitches. Just we'll get her done. And uh, um, I think this loop method is working great speed wise because you don't have to weave in the end at the beginning. Yeah, and then let's just get all of these long stitches uh, and then we'll come back and do all the leaves with the stem or with the uh, split stitch. And uh, yeah, then all we'll have left is the bow. And that's all done um, with split stitch. And then we'll have the, uh, the little critters there. All right. So awesome. I'm, I'm loving the progress of this so far. Uh, here we go again there. Uh, and it'll be really neat, I think, once we take the stabilizer off just to see the difference. So I, I we may be on location on Friday. We're going to see how the weather is and everything. So and, and Thursday might be a question mark for me, too. We have a meeting uh, in the evening here. Uh, so I might either be late on Thursday. Uh, I will keep you guys updated, though. Uh, it's kind of a long, it's a potentially long meeting uh, tomorrow evening. Um, that'll run into this a little bit and I, I need to be there for that. So, um, 
I will let you know about Thursday, but tomorrow we'll be full on doing this again, seeing how far we get. And then Friday might be on location at my uh, parents' house. So we'll see. We'll see what the weather uh, reveals to us. Otherwise, it'll be just normal here on Friday. So awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate hanging out with you again this evening. And uh, bundles are still available for this. And the PDF is too. And there's time to still stitch with us. So uh, you can check that out at penguinandafish.com. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great evening. Good night.